but one of the anachronisms that are coming out of PAS 1192 and BS 1192, the CDE, as it's being called. But before then, what are four projects to BIM? You, you know us as a collaboration platform, but we are a common data environment. And this is what we do. We are the UK's leading provider of collaborative online construction software. And we connect people, information, and processes. And you've heard people, information, and processes mentioned many times already today. We have a lot of users, and 11 of the top 20 UK contractors use us. And what makes us a good CDA is because we are a software as a service, so we are based in the cloud. So when we're talking about giving people access to data and allowing people to share data, all you need is a web browser, you don't need any more. So that really does make the information accessible to the whole project team. So PAS 1192 defines a common data environment as a single source of information for any given project used to collect, manage, and disseminate all the relevant approved project documents for multidisciplinary teams in a managed process. And what it does say about common data environments is it may be a project server, an XNet, which we are, a file-based retrieval system, or other suitable tool set. We firmly believe an XNet is the best way to do this, but people are deploying different methods. So PAS 1192, most of the people in the room haven't read PAS 1192 yet. So what's it all about? It's about your project information, your processes, data delivery, models, standards. It's not about Revit. This isn't about software. PAS 1192 very, very rarely mentions software, and it doesn't mention any specific softwares. It's about the process around your project information. So this is how I see a common data environment. It's a single version of the truth, which all the project stakeholders can have quick access and use with confidence. And the best way to achieve this is by using open BIM standards. If you use an IFC, you can view IFCs in our browser tool, and whoever wants the information can get the information and use it in their tools. And as a subset of IFC, you have Kobe. So Kobe is a great source of information, and the idea behind Kobe is it's only relevant information that you're handing over at the end of the job. So it's not just a spreadsheet full of information. You, you tailor it at the start to suit exactly what you need as a client at the end, and you deliver it, and you can check that it has been delivered by using Kobe standards. So, Daniel used a very similar diagram earlier, but mine moves. So, this is traditional communication and construction. It's very difficult to monitor this kind of situation where all our information is moved around by, by email. So, in a common data environment, the information and the data, your models, your documents, your non-graphical information is all stored in a common data environment so people can come and get it, choose the set of information that they need, and use it. And it's not just the people that struggle to communicate. It's the softwares as well. You, you can see from this diagram, there's a vast array of software that does brilliant jobs in the industry for various things that you need to do with your information and to create information. But to get those softwares to talk to each other, the best way to do that is through the common data environment using open BIM standards. So what goes in there, the common data environment? Obviously, you've seen this document already today, this diagram. But it's the, it's the green area that I'm looking at. The documentation, the non-graphical data, and the graphical model. And it, it's not just the completed versions of. Right at the very start, right at the brief, the, the left-hand side of the wedge, as soon as you start creating information, whether it's documents, non-graphical or graphical, it goes into the common data environment so everyone can share it and everyone can use it. So how do you implement a common data environment? What are the issues? Documents and drawings are easy to share. Four projects have been facilitating effective collaboration around these for years. We have, and many of you in the room will have used four projects. But getting the most out of sharing building information models presents a new challenge. How does everyone see the model and its data? Not everybody will have a copy of a design software, and even if they do, they'll have different design softwares, so not all the models will be readable in all your softwares. Who owns federated information? Very difficult thing. If one member of the project team is responsible for federating, federating information, bringing all the information together and federating it in their software, if there's mistakes and translation errors, is that their fault? Are they, are they to blame? And can unfinished work be shared to assist the design process? Historically, what we saw earlier with the, the landscape presentation, 
we deliver ready information and then we have a quiet period and then we just deliver some more ready information. And how is the information exchange data compiled and validated? People want this data, but how do we make sure it's right? So PAS 1192, most of you haven't read it yet, but you should. It's here to help, again. Top right hand corner of the, the diagram is the employer's information requirements, which we've just heard about. Once you have that set of information set up, that feeds into the central square, which is how BS 1192 2007 describes the common data environment. So what happens here is you start off in the blue box of work in progress. So that's your information. So it's not ready yet, but it's what you're working on. That information is approved. It doesn't mean it's complete, but it's ready to be shared. You've got things like your coordinates right, and you're working in the right units of measurements. You, you haven't made fundamental mistakes by not following the procedures set out in the employee's information requirements and your BIM execution plan. So once you've got some, some information that is ready to be shared and people will be able to use, it goes into the shared area. Um, the shared area is a pool of information for everyone to go in, get, use, and that will reiterate back into work in progress. And then it will come down as published documents. We all know published documents, that's how we've always worked. They will be models and they will be drawings as well. Once you've got published documents, you can draw Kobe from them. You can create tender packs from them. And as they become superseded, they will move into the archive. So the whole di diagram here starts with the top with the uh, capital expenditure. That is your project. And it'll move down. Once you've completed the project, it'll be verified. The information will be verified. And it'll move into the bottom of the diagram, which is the, the operational expenditure. And whilst the information is there, it's up to the FM teams to manage that information, make sure it stays valid so it can be pushed back in and used to form the next set of employees' information requirements when it comes round to, to doing an extension or a demolition or any, any way. You, you don't lose your data. You don't have to start again. So this is the top bit with a bit of a graphic which hopefully will work. So your, your initial mass and model goes from work in progress to the shared area. People make comments. And that will feed into an adjacencies diagram back in, in work in progress. So you're using that information to inform your next set. And again, you share that information so everyone can use that information. Collect more comments. And the design gets richer through this process of everybody sharing information. Nobody's working out of sync with each other because you have the latest set of information. You're delivering this data once every week or once every fortnight at a set time. So you know that you've got very, very recent information. You're not working on old revisions. So you get to a point where that data is, is good and everyone's happy with it. So you can publish. At that point, you can draw Kobe out. You can, you, you can pull a data sheet from that model to see how rich the data behind the graphical information is. And you can also use that to create subcontractor packages and outer specialists. So they can start their work based on published information that you know is correct. So you're giving your supply chain good information. And that can be pulled back in and goes into the shared area to be authorized and eventually published. And the additional data that's been added in by the supply chain is also fed into the Kobe. And then at the end of the job, we, we feed the job out the bottom of this, this top end of the diagram with good quality model information that matches the building that you've built and a good set of Kobe or an information requirement that has been set at the start of the job, which the client can actually use because that's what they asked for. So the benefits of implementing a common data environment. You reduce or eliminate the checking, revision, and reissue cycle. You, you're not putting out bad information that's going to have to come back to you, and you're going to have to change it straight away and reissue and revise. There's an understanding that you're sharing information. It's not always a published document. It's, it's an iterative process. Everybody's working together. Project team members can extract selections of the latest approved data from the shared area of the CDA. Not everybody needs all the information. They can choose the information that they need to inform their work. And there's a reduced need for coordination checks because coordination is a byproduct of the detailed design production process. So clash detection, yes, it's, it, it's something that people are going to have to do. But if we share our data and we use our data in a smarter way and everybody's working on the latest information, we're all professional people. We should make less mistakes. So there should be less clashes by using the common data environment approach and having good data. 
Any information can subsequently be used for construction planning, estimating, cost planning, facilities management, and many other downstream activities. Shared information reduces the time and cost in producing coordinated information. There's no need for getting all the plans out and trying to work out what lies on top of what. You know it's working because it, you've handled it as you've gone along. And any number of documents can be generated in different combinations of graphic and model files. If you have a good 3D model full of rich data, you can start using that to, to pull your plans, pull your sections, and, and make a good set of documents. And spatial coordination gives first time fit information. As I say, we're professionals. We shouldn't be getting it wrong if we've got good information. When the industry gets it wrong, it's because we're usually working on bad information or old information, or there's been a misunderstanding. So the future challenges for the common data environment. Once we have all the information in the common data, what do we do with it? We can combine uh, the data sources to provide project reports. How complete is the code? Has everybody updated their models in accordance with this week's drop? Control the roles of participants. So if you know who is playing what role on the job, that should be able to control what information they can add to the model, what they can add to the code based on their role. And you can identify who should provide what and when through design responsibility matrices, which are based in their common data environment. So everybody can see this matrix of who is meant to deliver what and when. So you can find out what you should have done by now. And if you have your employees' information requirements and your BIM execution plan set up, you should be able to prevent incorrect information being shared very quickly because you'll be able to understand that it's incorrect very quickly. And it facilitates the creation of federated product deliverables. If we've all got to work together to deliver an IFC or deliver a Kobe sheet, it can't be done on one person's machine. It's got to be in the common data environment so everybody can add to this information and add the richness as we go along. And once you've got this rich information that everybody's fed into, um, we can check that everybody's done what they said they were going to do. You can validate that it's been done. So as a company, what are we doing to help deliver BIM projects? We're already allowing the project team to collaborate around models in a web browser. And that's basically what for BIM, the, the, pro the product of the technology strategy board project that we've done with Northumbria Uni, Finty Construction, Kingspan, BIM Academy, and AEC3. This is the product of two years hard work to make an IFC viewer in a browser that can ext extract the Kobe and show you the properties really allow people to collaborate around IFC information. So, by clicking that button, brings up a remote session. So, it doesn't matter if I'm in the UK and somebody's in Singapore. If they've got a web browser, we can share the same session. I can show them the model. I can show them the Kobe. I can show them the tree. We can collaborate around the information based on a web browser. We're extracting and validating Kobe. So, we've got a Kobe tab. We'll tell you how many errors are in that Kobe. What is wrong with that Kobe data sheet based against the UK template as it stands? And then we can export the, the spreadsheet. If people want the spreadsheet, we can export it. The most powerful way of using Kobe is not through an Excel spreadsheet. But people do want them for now so they can see them. And it, the, the UK government wants Kobe because they can handle spreadsheets so far. They're not sophisticated enough to really start handling data rich information that a Kobe and IFC can provide. So they can have a spreadsheet if you want. And we're linking models, metadata, and Kobe and documents together. So you've got a door, you've got the Kobe about the door, you've got the properties about the door, and there's a, there's a link in the Kobe which will take you to any specifications that you've got sat in your common data environment. So we're tying all that information together. And that's on top of the existing functionality for our projects. This is stuff we've done for years, and many of you will be aware of what we do. But the stuff that really applies to BIM that we've done in the past, task management. So you've been able to assign tasks to people for years. What you can do with that is if you've got a BCF file which contains clash information, you can apply that to a task and send the, the clash information out to the right person and audit whether it comes back and make sure the clashes are resolved. And workflows to make sure models can flow through that PAS 1192 environment. So if a model is put into the work in progress area, you can perform checks and it goes to the right people to make sure 
it's, it's valid before it gets into the shared area and the same for published. And the ability to prepare tender packs based around IFC information. So you can package up your information, your documents and your models together in one place and let people see it in a browser and say, this is what we'd like you to price, please. So what are we doing next? We're building a platform which can federate the biggest models in the browser. We are federating some huge models in the browser. And once they're loaded, they'll run quicker in your browser window than they will in Revit because we've cached the data. So it's there. Um, we're federating, federating Kobe in the common data environment based on UK and US standards, which is supported by UniClass 2, with integrated roles and responsibilities, defined by a, responsibility, uh, a design responsibility matrix, all in line with the BIM execution plan and the employee's information requirements. Once we can do all that, we can really start using the data to report on Kobe completeness and validity, check everyone's delivered on their responsibilities, see how many clashes have been resolved and how many are outstanding, give consistent and re reliable information to the QSs and the specialists, and capture all the O and M data in one place. So there's a quick plug for us at the end. That's, that's common data environments.